Sometime in September, Medicare beneficiaries should be on the lookout for their annual notice of change, and it will be vital reading. And here to talk with us about that is Jay O, author of Maximize Your Medicare. Jay, welcome. Thanks for having me, Bob. So I think a lot of times Medicare beneficiaries might receive their annual notice of change and file it away without reading it and not thinking about it. But this year, that shouldn't be the case for many, right? We've discussed this on many occasions, Bob. It's never been our thought over here that you would just simply throw the, this annual notice of change into the garbage. And this year for coming into 2025, I'd like to emphasize that point with the audience, which is that we would expect fairly dramatic changes to both Part D and to Medicare Advantage plans for a number of reasons. It's been a very eventful year. We have the Inflation Reduction Act, which is coming into full flight here into 2025. The net result is going to be that, for example, standalone prescription plans, we will expect notably higher premiums for on a monthly basis. And it can come as a shock to some, but it, the regulations are written so that you must be told in advance with this annual notice of change. This year, those line items will look quite different across the board. Just as a reminder to folks watching, Jay, the, the people who do get the annual notice of change are Medicare Advantage beneficiaries, as well as uh, those with standalone Part D plans that may have original Medicare. That is right. Both Part D and Medicare Advantage plan members will be receiving these letters. For Medigap, that is not sent. And the simple reason is that the contract itself is standardized and grandfathered, meaning the coverage does not change, although your premiums may change. And as another reminder, the ANOC will only cover the plan that you're currently enrolled in. It won't necessarily help you compare and contrast with other plans. And that won't happen until uh, October 15th when you can, uh, when, the, um, when the enrollment period begins again. The actual information that we'll be able to be able to use to compare will be available on October 1st. But the first day that you can choose to change your plan is October 15th, the beginning of the annual election period. That's right, Bob. Right. And then given the uh, the vast number of changes, you mentioned the Inflation Reduction Act, other changes to come, uh, it seems to me like if you're having any difficulty evaluating whether the plan that you're in is still best for you or another plan might be best for you, in addition to using the plan finder, working with a professional could go a long way toward helping you make the right decision. I think that that is generally the case. And especially going into 2025, we're going to have a situation where in not only the number of plans is going to decline, meaning that in Part D, as well as Medicare Advantage, you can expect withdrawals from certain markets. In fact, certain carriers have already announced this, that certain plans will disappear not be available from a particular carrier, depending on your location. So there's going to be a fair amount of turmoil, so much so that the ANOCs are per these letters, these annual notice of change letters are late, going to be expected to be, you know, towards the end of September, which is very late, leaving people not that much time to go through the process of comparing the different alternatives. Yeah. So one last question triggered by your, your last response here is this notion that if I get my ANOC, is a possibility that my Medicare Advantage provider or my standalone Part D provider may tell me that they're exiting the market? Strictly speaking, the answer is yes. But the reality is, is that many carriers, from what I've heard, have already started to inform existing policy members or Medicare Advantage members, I should say, that, for example, a particular plan is leaving the location entirely. Not good news for folks who may have uh, come to like the plan that they were on, perhaps. It's going to be a very complicated year. The number, as the headlines suggest, the 
usage rate of healthcare services is higher and the costs are higher. And on the other end, Medicare Advantage plan carriers are under increasing scrutiny from the federal government and all components. So this is leading to some reconsideration, if you will, of plans in particular locations by the carriers. My guess is that you've just answered the question to the beneficiary who might be wondering, why is my um, carrier leaving? It's because of increased scrutiny, increased costs, et cetera. All the stakeholders here are under notable pressure. For example, even physicians are taking a pay cut from the federal government as far as for their services as well. Pressure on all ends. Bottom line is when your annual notice of change arrives, don't throw it in the trash, open it straight away, give it a close read, seek help if you need. I think you've summarized it very, very well, Bob.